Mrs. Darling loved to have everything arranged in just a certain way. And Mr. Darling had a passion for being exactly like his neighbors. So, of course, they had a nurse. In this case, a nurse or nursemaid refers to someone who looks after the children when the parents are busy. As they were poor, because of the huge amount of milk the children drank, this nurse was a prim Newfoundland dog called Nana, who had belonged to no one in particular until the darlings hired her. Nana had always thought children were important, however, and the darlings had become acquainted with her in Kingsington Gardens, where she spent most of her spare time peeping into baby carriages and was much hated by careless nursemaids whom Nana actually followed to their homes and complained of to their mistresses. She proved to be quite a treasure of a nurse. She was very thorough at bath time and she would jump up at any moment of the night if one of the children made the slightest cry. Of course, her kennel, a small bed for dogs, was in the nursery, a place where the children sleep. Nana had a genius for knowing when a cough is a thing not to worry about, and when a cough means the child needs a warm scarf around his throat. She believed strongly in old-fashioned cures, like rhubarb leaves, and she made sounds of contempt over all this new talk about germs, and so on. It was a lesson in propriety to see her taking the children to school, walking calmly by their side when they were well behaved, and butting them back into line if they strayed. On John's football days, she never once forgot his sweater, and she usually carried an umbrella in her mouth in case of rain. There is a room in the basement of Miss Folsom's school where the nurses wait. They sat on chairs while Nana lay on the floor. But that was the only difference. The other nurses pretended to ignore Nana as someone of an inferior social status to themselves. And she despised their light talk. She resented visits to the nursery from Mrs. Darling's friends. But if they did come, she first whipped off Michael's pinafore, an apron, and put him into the shirt with blue braiding and smoothed out Wendy and made a dash at John's hair. No nursery could possibly have been conducted more correctly, and Mr. Darling knew it. Yet he sometimes wondered uneasily whether the neighbors talked. He had his position in the city to consider. Nana also troubled him in another way. He had sometimes a feeling that she did not admire him. I know she admires you tremendously, George, Mrs. Darling would assure him. And then she would sign to the children 
to be especially nice to father.